Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Hip Cats, Groovy Chicks, and Finger Poppin' Daddy. You know, it's the alter dominant ego man here. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. And you know, last night was Halloween, and I went out trick or treating. How about that? You know, you know what my costume was? I went as a jazz musician. You know, I had a zoot suit, and you know, fancy tie, pork pie hat. I had dark glasses on and everything, you know, and I hung out with my friends. I went out with uh, my friends, uh, you know, I'm a ghost, so I went out with uh, Molly's ghost and the ghost of Christmas past, and I went out with uh, Invisible Man, you know, Invisible Man, he didn't do too well last night. But anyway, you know, so I got to the first house, you know, and they said, uh, well, what, 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 is, what is your costume? I said, well, I'm a jazz musician. You know what they told me? Cause you gotta go around the back door, and you gotta go through the kitchen to get the, the treats. Well, I was humidified. Yeah. What's the word? Humidified? No. Humid humidified. No, what was it? I do I can't remember now. Hey, hey, wait a minute, now I'm not through yet. Now I got more to say. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> that was the alter dominant ego man. Sorry about him. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch, folks, and welcome hip cats and groovy chicks. And um the alter dominant man, he went out trick-or-treating last night. He came home with two Hershey bars. <laughs> and the invisible man came home with nothing. Uh, but anyway, I think the alter dominant man meant to say he was humiliated. I think that's the word he was looking for there. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I have a special song for you tonight. It is based on a request I had from someone. One of my subscribers wanted me to play the song Laura and talk about it. Laura is from a movie by the same name, Laura. It was written by David Raskin. And I'm going to be talking about spread voicings and rootless chords and also the use of 2-5-1 progressions in three keys. So here we go with a great song. I'm going to play it for you and then talk about it after. Here we go with the song, Laura.
Okay, welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio, where I explained what I played. And this is a good example of learning to play on two five ones, because you're going to be playing in actually three different keys, and actually you have a two five into the first chord, which is the sixth chord of the key we're in. We're in the key of C. This is Laura. Okay, so it starts out on the A minor. Interesting because what it's doing is it's um, really relating to E flat major, but it ends up in C C major. So we're really in in the key of C. So I start out in the key of C. I play a progression: one, two, three, two, one, and then the two five into the relative minor. Of, of C major, which is A minor. So when you're playing a relative minor, uh, two five one into a relative minor, the two chords going to be half diminished because of the scale. If you play an A minor scale, it's going to have those notes. So the the two chord is going to be half diminished. It's going to have a minor third and a flat five. So now, so I played. I made up an introduction of one, two, three, two, one, and then a two, five into the relative minor. So now the melody goes uh, like this on the two chord. So the melody is built on the ninth of the minor seven chord, which is interesting. You know, you don't usually hear that on tunes, but. These are the pickups. So you have that's the eleventh. That's the sharp five of the the E. So a very interesting tune. You don't normally hear that kind of thing. And then it goes two five one into G major. So it has nothing to do with the key that we're in, which is very interesting. But it's but it works because it's a two five one. And, and two five ones will work independently of the key at any time. They'll always sound good. And, and so he's come up with a melody on the ninth. And then this chord. Using chromatics. That's the sharp five of the, of the, of the, uh, the two of the five. To another nine. So it goes nine, sharp five, nine. You know, that makes sense, right? Go from nine to nine. So it's it's a two five one using the nines. Nine. Sharp five. Now that's his melody. Now, interesting about interesting about that melody is that it's the ninth, sharp five, and then it ends up on the six. You don't hear that. I mean that is a very hip, you know. Melody. We think it would be a jazz melody, um, and yet it's written for a movie. So, you know, you would think that most melodies would be based on chord tones. These are not chord tones. These are a ninth. Chord tones would be root third, fifth, octave third. You know, we're doing nine. I'm doing sharp five. Nine, six. So it's very interesting that way. Then he continues it by repeating it um, on a two five one one whole step below. So we're going two five one into G, then with two five one into F, the same melody. Now, interesting thing is that you don't need to do it again. We could do it again, but why do it again? You know, two times is enough. So, on the third time, you can have this. Yeah, but let's do the repeat. That time it goes to the ninth. Then it goes, then here. It's still two five one. So it's two five one into G, two five one into F. Now it still does two five one into E flat. So we're going down in whole steps from G to F to E flat. So 
So that is going to work harmonically. You know, that will work harmonically in a chord progression because it's very logical, so it'll work. It makes sense to our ears and so on. But we, he's going to change the melody. He's going to go... He doesn't go... Di -da -da, di -da -da. He doesn't repeat. Then here. Ba -da. Two, five, one, two, five, one. He's repeating the melody in a way, but... So he's, re he's repeating the idea again. He's going to echo that like this way. Ha! Look at that. Instead of dee da da Respect that, you da 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 Sharp 11. Da da So there, there is a very interesting and creative use of the melody in placing it on a note that is a non-chord tone. Da 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 But it works, you know. Then it's just repeating now. Okay, so there you have the melody. Now on the last ending, it's going to be da da. Changes it from da 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 da. da. It goes here da 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 da. Okay, we're good. So it has a second ending that is completely different from the first ending. And it's very rewarding to hear that variety there, you know, like um, da -da. to the two chord on the G, and then the minor three of the, in the C scale, two. resolving to see. So it's very interesting harmonically and yet simple, not complex, but perfectly written. And so what I do in addition to that, I'm using mostly spread voicings, but you know, I'm always adding ninths and I'm always adding upper extensions. Even there, I'm adding the sharp knife. Or so. And then I'm adding progressions in between chords. So I'm having this. I'm putting in connecting lines harmonically to the next chord. You know, so like what it is is um, A minor. The G major, and then B minor, B flat minor, A minor, A flat minor, G mi minor. So they're all minor chords descending chromatically into the G minor. You know, so I had. I right, see. A minor. Now, descending into the G minor from B minor. G minor 9. Now, same, same kind of idea going into the F minor. Now, a rising line. You know, I need something harmonically to fill that space. And I put a C minor here to approach the A minor. Say, why do I use a C minor? Okay, so I'm on an E flat major. 
it, it can move down. So, so I'm moving down chromatically, E flat, D, C, B flat, A. So that makes sense. There's your sharp 11 on the D7. You see, so it all, it all works. It's, it's harmonically structured in such a way that it makes a lot of sense. And it's very interesting and it's very creative. Um, you know, on the, and on the last ending, I'm using that diminished chord there. To the, to the two chord of G. Okay. Now up a half step of the two chord to the two chord. You see, so it's very well constructed. It's simple and complex at the same time. It's very creative. It's a beautiful melody that holds together really well. And it complements a movie. It's a movie theme. So study it. I'll give you a lead sheet. Watch this video and write to me if you have questions. And until next time, we'll sign off now. Here we go. Signing off. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Thanks for watching this video on Laura. Please check out my book which talks about the spread voicings and the rootless voicings in great detail. Check it out. And please write to me if you have any comments or requests. I'll be happy to honor them. And until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend upstairs, Hermie Dressel, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.